This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service created by the founder of the Discovery Channel that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals like Berlin 1945, time travel in cinematic style into the city's most fateful year through the eyes of those who experienced it, and Apocalypse Stalin. The Rise of Stalin from Bank Robber to Cold-Blooded Leader of the Soviet Union. Go to curiositystream.com forward slash Mark Felton for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for our fans, use the promo code Mark Felton and you will save 25% off, which comes to only $14.99 a year. That's just $1.25 per month. For the very best in history programming, choose Curiosity Stream. Did you know that at one point Adolf Hitler was probably the richest man in Europe? How he amassed such wealth is an often ignored part of the history of World War II, and what became of all those riches an equally overlooked story. Hitler certainly wasn't born rich. In fact, he was born neither rich nor poor. His father's respectable job as a career Austro-Hungarian imperial customs officer ensured that his family had a decent lower middle class standing and income. But there was little to spare. Whatever money his parents left Hitler after their deaths, primarily the savings his father had accrued from 30 years loyal service to the state, Hitler frittered away in Vienna, pursuing his dream of becoming an artist. Hitler ended up virtually penniless and living in a men's shelter, eking out a precarious living as a day labourer on building sites or selling watercolours and postcards to tourists. His poverty remained as a World War I soldier on a lance corporal's wage, and by the time he found the German Workers' Party in 1919 sent to spy on its activities by the Reichswehr, he was still poor. But after joining the party and becoming its most prominent spokesman, Hitler began to acquire money and status. Sympathizers and supporters began to donate money, and before long Hitler had a nice Mercedes car and a small apartment in Munich. The event that transformed Hitler's finances was the publication of his book Mein Kampf in 1925, following his release from Landsberg prison after serving a sentence for the Beer Hall Putsch, an attempted revolution in Munich. Hitler needed the money, the Nazi party was in disarray following the failed putsch, and Hitler also hoped that the book, an autobiographical political manifesto, would win his party more supporters, as it began to struggle for power, this time via the democratic vote instead of the gun. The popularity of the book grew as the German economy deteriorated in the late 1920s and early 1930s, and the Nazis' message became more popular, and once Hitler came to power as Chancellor in January 1933, it would become almost an official state publication. Between 1925 and 1933, Hitler made 1.2 million Reichsmarks from book royalties, equivalent today to $5.6 million. However, Hitler was also a successful tax dodger, and during this time he had failed to pay income tax on the money he had earned from the 240,000 book sales. Shortly after coming to power, Hitler received a tax bill amounting to 405,500 Reichsmarks, today an eye-watering $1.6 million. Hitler had no intention of paying up, and steps were quickly taken on his behalf via the Chancellery to have the Führer declared tax-exempt, which he duly was in 1934. Mein Kampf continued to sell well. By the time war broke out in 1939, 5.2 million copies in 11 languages, including English, had been sold. By war's end in May 1945, almost 10 million copies of Mein Kampf had been sold or given away in Germany alone, earning Hitler millions in royalties. Hitler spent some of this cash on building himself a grand house, called the Berghof in Bavaria, and purchasing a luxury apartment in Munich. Hitler also received not one, but two salaries as leader of Germany. In 1933, on becoming Chancellor, he received that salary from the government, 
However, following the death of Reich President Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg in 1934, Hitler merged the offices of Chancellor and President into one new title, Führer or Leader, but also paid himself Hindenburg's old presidential salary. A lot of Hitler's income came as donations from supporters. American car manufacturer Henry Ford was an early admirer and financial donor. The armaments and steel magnates Gustav Krupp and Fritz Thiessen between them gave the Nazi party over 5 million Reichsmarks during the war, equivalent today to $37.2 million, some of it directly benefiting Hitler. Some of these donations were used by Hitler's sinister private secretary, Martin Bormann, to create special buildings for Hitler's amusement, most famously the eagle's nest above the Berghof. So how much in total did Hitler receive from such corporate donors? It's been calculated by historians that between 1933 and 1945, Hitler received about 700 million Reichsmarks, equivalent today to a staggering $5.2 billion, making Hitler one of the richest men in the world at the time. Another way for Hitler to make money was by charging a royalty on his image, specifically those used on postage stamps. Hitler received a small royalty payment on every stamp sold in Nazi Germany, generating millions more that were hidden in many different bank accounts, or invested into art and properties, among other things, by Hitler's business manager Max Arman, who incidentally was an old World War I buddy of Hitler's from his regiment. So what became of all this wealth when Hitler died on the 30th of April 1945 in his Berlin bunker? Shortly before his death, Hitler dictated his last will and testament to his secretary, Traudel Junger, copies being sent out of the bunker by military courier. Martin Bormann was named as executor to the will. Hitler's art collection, some of it legally purchased, the rest stolen during German conquests, he left to an art gallery that was never built in Linz, Austria, the so-called Führer Museum. Some objects of a sentimental nature were bequeathed to relations and his housekeeper, among other servants. Regarding his properties, they were either already in Allied hands, such as his Munich apartment, or bombed to ruins, like his famous Alpine house, the Berghof. Hitler left all his property and money to the Nazi party, and in the event that this had ceased to exist, the German state. The German state also ceased to exist in 1945, being divided into four occupation zones, British, American, French and Soviet. So whatever of Hitler's assets, as could be found, were seized by the appropriate Allied occupation authorities. However, with the merger of the British, American and French occupation zones in May 1949, creating the Federal Republic of Germany, or West Germany, those assets technically were taken over by the new German government, as per Hitler's instructions. The Bavarian government in particular, as Hitler had been legally resident in Bavaria at the time of his death, although of course he died in state property in Berlin. The case of Mein Kampf is interesting as the book has remained in print after Hitler's demise, generating income for the Bavarian government, who held the copyright. The Bavarian government refused, however, to permit the book's publication in Germany. So let's talk about some of the foreign royalties for Mein Kampf. When Hitler declared war on the US in 1941, the American government seized control of Hitler's American publishing royalties via the Trading with the Enemy Act, and in 1945 these royalties amounted to $255,000, and this money was distributed to war refugee charities. Also in 1945, the US publisher Horton Mifflin purchased the US rights to Mein Kampf from the US government's Office of Alien Property, paying $37,000. After 20 years of sales, the US royalties amounted to $700,000, which the company eventually donated to charity following a public outcry. In Britain, Mein Kampf was banned from publication from 1945 to 1969. Following this, publishers tried to donate the royalties to charities, but no one wanted them. Some foreign royalties have been given to Bavaria, which has distributed them quietly to charity. But in 2016, the book entered the public domain. 
He was immediately reprinted in Germany, becoming an overnight bestseller all over again, the book selling out on Amazon's German site within hours. By 2017, Mein Kampf, the new edition, had sold over 85,000 copies in Germany. Hitler's vast fortune has been inherited by the state of Bavaria, so therefore there is no vast fortune in bank accounts waiting to be claimed perhaps by Hitler's relatives or other interested parties. It no longer exists. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.